Hey, everybody. Neil Thompson from Teach the Geek here. I work with technical professionals so they can present more effectively, especially in front of non-technical audiences. And you can learn more about that at teachthegeek.com. Again, that's teachthegeek.com. For those of you all that don't know, I have a column, or maybe I'm a contributor. I'm not sure which it is. Column, columnist or contributor? I think <laughs> I'm a contributor to Inc. Magazine. And I became one earlier this year. I applied for it sometime last year. And I was approved in December of last year. And I submitted my first article either January or February of this year. I recently posted one of my articles on LinkedIn. And one of my connections asked me, how did I become a contributor? And I told them that I'd make a video about it. So here's the video. <laughs> it actually wasn't a difficult process at all. In fact, if you go to a, a link that I will have in the in the description of this video, it it basically walks you through the entire process. You fill out this form, and then you wait. I believe that I waited a few months. I might, it might yeah, I think it was a couple of months at least until I was I got an email saying that I was selected. Funny enough, when I got it, I I had forgotten I, that I even applied. I thought it was spam, but then I, I looked into it a little more, and then I saw, oh, actually. This is, this, is, this is legit. And, and then I remembered, oh, yes, I did apply to be an ink contributor. And then, well, now I'm an ink contributor. So what did it take to become one? Well, firstly, you have to have what would be considered a, a theme for what your column or your, what you're going to be contributing about. For me, it is about technical people improving at giving presentations. So if you go to my my link, which I'll also include in the description, you'll see basically all the all the articles that I wrote have that theme in mind. And you also have to realize the target audience for Inc., which is entrepreneurs and C-level C executives. So anything that you write has to have them in mind. And in fact, a couple of my articles were rejected because they didn't have those two groups in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm a lot more careful as to what I, I write about to submit to them. But back to actually becoming a contributor in the first place. Some things that they're going to ask you for is they're going to ask you for that theme. And then they're going to ask you for uh, your, well, the, the topic of interest, which I, which I covered. And then they're going to ask you for 10, 10 sample headlines. And you can actually use chat GPT. Once you have your topics of interest, you can ask chat GPT, develop 10 headlines based on this topic or based on this theme and it will give you some and then you can adjust them to your liking to see if it would make sense. Of course, when you see these headlines, you have to also think to yourself, is this something that I'd be willing to write about? So don't just come up with any headlines with no intention of writing about what that headline is about. But as I said, ChatGPT can be really helpful in developing those headlines. In fact, when I applied, I don't even think I used ChatGPT, but if I had to do it all over again, I certainly would. It would make things a whole lot easier. And then they ask you to submit a 500 word sample, writing sample. If you are, uh, per, if you have a blog like I do, I, then I just submitted one of those blog posts. But even coming up with the with the with the 500 words isn't all that difficult. I mean, if you're going to be submitting articles to them. Well, this could very well be the first one. <laughs> Just make it have make it having to do with the theme that you want to write about for Inc. And I think that works well. And then the last thing is link to any blogs or articles that you've already written. And I think I submitted the link to my blogs from my website. And then I think I also submitted some articles that I had written on LinkedIn. And that's essentially it. And as I said, I will include the link to the form that you need to fill out. And it's very you know, self-explanatory. Once you have all those, those various things that I mentioned, the link to the blogs, the, the 500 word sample, the 10 sample headlines, and the, the, to the, the, the topic of interest that you wanna write about, you submit, submit all that information in the form and then you wait. I wish I could give you some more information on how long I waited because I don't remember, but I, I, I know I applied in 2023 and I found out that I was approved in December of 2023. And I started writing for them shortly thereafter. There's an onboarding process once you're approved with one of the editors. They basically give you the lay of the land as to how you're supposed to submit your articles. 
And that's essentially it. You submit your articles based on that on that process. You wait, they tell you, then you get a message from them saying that your article has been approved and it will appear on this date. And they send you the link. And, and that's, that's basically it. That's what I've been doing for the last few months. In fact, I submitted an article, let's see, maybe a week or so ago. So now I'm just waiting to see when it's going to be approved. Typically, it's about maybe a couple of weeks to, from submitting the article to hearing back whether it's approved. It could be it could be sooner, but yeah, I, I I think a couple of weeks is what it's been averaging out for me. Hopefully that that that's not a sign of my of poor writing or anything. <laughs> they haven't said anything about that, so hopefully that's that's not the case. But hopefully that's been helpful. That's for, for the person who suggested that I do this video. Hopefully it's been helpful for him and. For those of you all that are considering or, or would be interested in being a contributor for a contributor to Inc., hopefully it's helpful to you as well. Again, my name is Neil Thompson. I'm the founder of Teach the Geek. I work with technical professionals so they can present more effectively, especially in front of non-technical audiences. And you can learn more about that at teachthegeek.com. Again, that's teachthegeek.com. Until next time, take care and stay safe.